Okay. Jones. $965 million in the Connecticut case. You'll recall in the Texas case, it was a modest, a mild, a reasonable $45 million, uh, which included punitive damages, which are going to be reduced because Texas has a cap on punitive. From what I understand, this is Connecticut. These are not punitive damages. These are compensatory damages, and there is no limit on compensatory damages. So barring an appeal and a successful appeal, because it will be appealed, barring a successful appeal, uh, you know, a jury can award whatever they want by compensatory damages, and there's no limit. I mean, no limit in a, in a, in a factual sense and no limit in a moral sense. Whether or not you think Alex Jones is guilty is one thing. Uh, people were making comparisons. Oh, O.J. Simpson in his wrongful death lawsuit uh, that was filed by Anna Nicole, not Anna, um, not Anna Nicole Smith. Oh, his wife, Nicole Smith Brown. F filed by his wife and Goldman's family. Uh, they got roughly the same amount for wrongful death against the individual who caused the wrongful death in the civil trial. People are, this is so light years beyond anything that the world has ever seen. It's, it's if it doesn't get successfully overturned, um, enjoy the world that we have ushered in. This is beyond a First Amendment issue. You go to social media, and Barnes and I have talked about this. We're gonna go through all the points, and I'm gonna steal men the case against Jones, as I've done since the beginning. And I'm going to sensitize everybody that even if, and I'll say even if, 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 you believe Alex Jones said the things he said, which I think we can all agree on, uh, you believe they were defamatory, hurtful, etc., which I think we can mostly agree on. Uh, even if you believe all of that, even if you believe he defaulted on his obligations, his discovery obligations in the trial, even if you believe that, the way this trial went down, uh, a, a default verdict followed by a trial in which, on the quantum, in which the defendant didn't have his hands tied behind his back. He had duct tape placed over his mouth. It, even if you agree to all of that, you cannot accept the outcome of this, uh, if only as a matter of principle and law. But that seems to have been pushed by the wayside, given the politics and the emotions in this case. Okay, let's start from the beginning. Did, did Norm Pattis said expects the total final judgment to be increased to two to 2.5 billion total because it's 965 million compensatory damages. Thus far, I don't think they've, they've um, adjudicated on punitive. They haven't adjudicated on legal fees. I mean, legal fees. As if the, as if the legal fees, which might be 20% of any judgment. <laughs> I don't understand anything you're saying, but I like hearing you talk. Sorry for got mig. You're going to understand it because we're going to go step by step now. The veggies are freeze-dried, ground fine, and put under vacuum again, then sold to lawyers, sometimes desiccated lawyers. <laughs> well, uh, okay, um, let's start from the beginning. People on the interwebs, point number one that you're going to have to either respond to or understand is false. He had his trial. No, he didn't. Now, that's not to say he didn't go through the process. Alex Jones, on the merits of the defamation and intentional infliction of emotional distress, went through the process to some extent, never had a trial. There was never a jury trial finding culpability, responsibility on the defamation, intentional infliction of emotional stress. There was no jury trial in this case. Understand that. There was no jury trial on the merits, on the substance of the lawsuit. How can that be? How can that be? And this is where you're going to have to get into the second point. You're going to say to someone, uh, sir, the false memory that you have and the false memory that society as a whole is going to have in 10 years is that Alex Jones went through a trial on the merits. It was a month long in Connecticut. They talked about all of the evidence on the merits. They talked about the statements he made. They talked about yeah, everything, the school, the children, the families, everything. There was a trial on the merits. It lasted four weeks. That's going to be the collective memory to those who have forgotten or were not there at the time in a decade. No, it's not a question of partisan spin. 
there was no trial on the merits because the judge, usurping the powers of the jury, usurping the entire trial by jury, says Alex Jones did not comply with discovery requests. He's not only foreclosed from pleading, foreclosed from defending. I issue a default guilty verdict against Alex Jones. He's defaulted so badly, he's not going to trial. Not only is he not going to trial, the plaintiffs aren't going to trial. The plaintiffs are not going to have to prove their case even in the absence of a defendant. I grant the plaintiff's motion by default verdict. No jury trial. Understand that. And then you're going to have to navigate the second point of this. There was no jury trial on the merits. The judge, by default verdict, bypassing a jury altogether, bypassing evidentiary hearing on the merits, declared guilty Alex Jones of intentional infliction of emotional distress and defamation. And then they went to a jury trial on quantum alone after the finding of culpability had already been done by the judge by virtue of default verdict. Okay, we understand that now, point one. Now you're going to say that to someone and they're going to say, well, Alex Jones had his chance and he, he effed around and he found out. Okay. The argument is going to be Alex Jones refused. Uh, this is not the argument. This is, this is how it happened. Allegedly. You know, the court says Alex Jones failed to comply with discovery requests. He was asked to sit down. He was asked to communicate documents. He communicated millions of emails, text messages, uh, yada, yada, yada. But he did not communicate or he said he did not have Google Analytics, uh, certain financial information that the plaintiffs wanted to prove that he made money off of the lies and the, the statements at issue. He did not fully comply with discovery. It's undoubtable and undeniable that he complied to some extent, uh, produced, according to some, more documents than any defendant in history. Whatever. I, I mean, I, I don't know how you compare that, but produced hundreds of thousands, if not millions of emails, texts, et cetera, et cetera. You're going to hear people say, because this is how it happened. The court said, the court found Alex Jones effed around. He did not uh, disclose information. He concealed documents. He, didn't, he said he didn't have things that, he, that, he, that we think he had. Uh, therefore, he refused to comply with discovery requests. He had his opportunity and he played around. F around, find out, guilty by default verdict. That's how it happened. Now, whether or not Alex actually had the things that the court said he was not producing. Let's even assume that he did. One thing that is clear, now you're going to say that that's, that's, that's what happened. He effed around, he found out. All he had to do is he had his day in court. He had many days in court. He did not comply. He screwed around. He lied, yada, yada. He got what he deserved. Okay. That's, that's the way it happened. The argument to that is going to be, even if it's true that Alex Jones concealed, lied about having text messages relating to Sandy Hook, lied about not having access to or not using Google Analytics. These issues in the normal run of justice, at the very worst, might lead to some monetary sanctions, maybe some civil contempt, maybe even criminal contempt. But the plaintiffs would still have to go to court, to a jury, and prove their case. Ordinarily, I mean, even in the worst case scenario of an ordinary realm of justice, what would happen? Jones would be foreclosed from defending. He wouldn't be able to present evidence of his innocence. Most of the time, what that means is that even though he would be declared foreclosed from pleading, he can't defend himself, but he can still cross-examine plaintiffs on their evidence. That's what would happen in a normal run of things, even in the most extreme circumstances. The plaintiffs would still have to go to court, still have to prove their case before a jury. Think about it this way. Um, someone says we had a contract. He agreed to pay me. $100,000, uh, I don't know, for uh, re-roofing the house. I re-roofed the house. He didn't pay. Okay. I have the contract. Yeah, it, whatever. Let's just say uh, the defendant tries to delete text messages where he said, yeah, I, I, I'm not paying you, whatever. Okay. There's evidence that the defendant tried to de destroy evidence beyond concealed, tried to destroy it. Well, you still have to go to court and prove you had a contract and the work was done. It's not, the, the, the judge does not get to say, well, okay, this guy destroyed some evidence, so I'm just gonna presume that you have won your case. Maybe, I mean, I can't even think of a theoretical example where that could be uh, the, the appropriate sanction. I have to presume you made your case because of the 
egregious abuse by the defendant? Maybe there's a hypothetical. In this case, and as we've seen during the trial, it wasn't the case. At, at the very best, even if we uh, grant Alex Jones failed to disclose text messages about Sandy Hook, uh, failed to communicate Google Analytics, these are secondary issues to the defamation itself. But bear in mind also, this is defamation, intentional infliction of emotional distress. We're talking quantum and secondary aspects. Plaintiffs necessarily have to have these statements themselves, which are defamatory. And then maybe they can argue negative inferences from Jones's conduct as relates to other stuff. But the judge seizing on these in Connecticut, and then the Texas judge seized on this default to also issue the uh, default verdict in Texas, says, no, Alex Jones didn't, he didn't, he didn't fully comply with discovery. Therefore, I grant the plaintiff's case without them even having to prove the merits of it to a jury. Hold on, Rubia's in the house, and now I want to see what, uh, what Rubia had to say. Rubia is a Texas attorney, and I don't think she's uh, very sympathetic. Rubia, I don't want to put words in your mouth. I don't think, from my recollection, that you're actually very sympathetic to Jones as an individual as relates to the statements. If I'm wrong, I don't need to put words in your mouth. But even people who hate Jones and think he deserves something have to, have to agree here. These out-of-control verdicts are harmful to our society teaches lottery justice or lottery injustice. So people are going to say, Alex Jones, after round, all he had to do was comply. I would argue, as would others, there was nothing Jones could ever do to fully comply with discovery, but we'll never know that because that alternate universe will never occur. Even if we grant that he did not comply in the way the court said he did not comply, it's, in, it's absurd. It's untenable legally and just as a matter of pure justice to say he didn't provide Google Analytics, although they had all of the evidence at trial, we'll get to that in a second. He, he messed around so badly that not only is he foreclosed from defending, verdict default, default verdict, without the plaintiffs even having to prove their case to a jury. It's inconceivable. Okay, that's the other argument. Let's go one step further. Anybody who watched this trial, all he had to do was, was F around and F around and find out, all he had to do was fully comply. All he had to do was fully comply. All right, well, one thing is clear. Then you say, well, he did fully comply. They got everything they needed because they had it all at trial. They had the Google Analytics. They had the text messages. People are going to say, oh, well, they got it. They got it, but they got it too late. He should have done it when they said, therefore, the punishment is just. Mm. If, that's, if that's the game that people are going to play, uh, that the judge holds the sword of Democles at any given moment capriciously, in the absence of irreparable harm to the plaintiff's ability to make their case, can say, case closed, default verdict, they don't even have to prove their case. Be careful what you wish for. Because one thing is clear, when you got to trial, and I was watching this trial, and I think most people are saying, they default, they, 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 he denied them evidence. Well, you saw at this trial, which was only on the quantum, they had all the evidence under the sun. They had Google Analytics. They had the text messages. They had all the videos that they needed. So whether or not he concealed it, delayed it, didn't give it to them in time, that's what civil contempt is for, a fine a day until you comply. They had all of this information and it was submitted as evidence during the trial. So people are going to say he had his jury trial. He didn't. It was a default verdict, jury trial on the quantum. F around and find out he didn't fully comply. Okay, even if he didn't, the sanction is absolutely untenable. And besides which, they had all the evidence that he allegedly didn't give, whether he gave it late, whether or not they had to twist his arm. Okay, that's, what's, that's what civil sanctions are for, uh, uh, civil contempt sanctions are for. Let's get to the quantum now. $120 million to one of the plaintiffs, $90 million to the FBI agent. In a trial, by the way, I'm sorry, in a trial where even in this trial on the quantum, Jones could not make certain statements about his own innocence. Now, people don't know this because they didn't watch the trial. Uh, the Waukesha killer is getting more deference than Alex Jones. A man who actually plowed his vehicle, killing six people, is getting more deference uh, in his right to a defense. Yes, it's criminal. And yes, it's somewhat different criminal versus uh, civil. Alex Jones made statements and didn't carry out acts. He didn't carry out the underlying acts that are at issue here, the, the most horrific acts imaginable. He was not allowed at trial 
to talk about the fact that he allegedly didn't make any money or he didn't make the millions that were being alleged he made off specifically off the Sandy Hook coverage. He wasn't allowed to testify that he apologized multiple times. He wasn't allowed to testify um, what else? That, 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 that he didn't mean to cause them harm. Because recall people, the judge unilaterally issued a, a default verdict that he was guilty of intentional infliction of emotional distress. Well, you can't say it was an accident. I didn't mean to do it. I feel guilty about it if it was intentional infliction of emotional distress. The, the, I just forgot what I was going to say. Oh, yeah, no, that's right. He couldn't even say that he didn't mean to do it without being held in contempt. So the judge issues the default verdict without any trial on the merits in front of a jury. And then in the jury trial on quantum, effectively says Jones cannot say anything to mitigate the quantum, apologized, retracted, uh, didn't intend to cause harm because of her prior default verdict order. And then they issue a, a total of $965 million in real just and fair damages to the, to the defendants, to the plaintiffs. So th th that's, that's, that's where it's at. It's, it's, a system, it's a systemic procedural injustice. You might think Jones deserves something and people don't like me for it because I've said it from the beginning. Yeah, I, he said some tremendously stupid things. I think had he gone to trial, uh, he, he could have you know, probably been found uh, responsible for defamation, for intentional infliction of emotional distress. But there were other issues in this case. Statute of limitations was one on the merits. That, that's the other purely hypothetical. Let's just say that in, in my hypothetical roof repair, uh, the guy destroyed the contract, but you waited five years to sue. Well, it doesn't matter if you waited. It doesn't matter if he destroyed the contract and did everything terrible if your action had lapsed uh, as a matter of statute of limitations. And so even, you need to go to trial and prove the essential elements of the existence of the claim, one of which is that it's not time barred. And that was potentially an issue here. He could be guilty as guilty can be. He could have said the most offensive, insane things imaginable. If the plaintiffs are time barred, that's a defense that goes beyond the guilt of the individual if they did not file the lawsuit within the required time frame. Couldn't do that. But there are people on Twitter, they, they love it. They love it because they hate Alex Jones so much. They'll ignore an injustice because they hate the person against whom the injustice is being uh, perpetrated. So that's it. Did I, did I miss anything on this? The, 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 the trial was a Kafka-esque show trial. I mean, in the purest of senses, he was already guilty. He couldn't assert any statements in his own defense. He could not answer questions freely um, without the risk of being held in contempt as the judge vocally and repeatedly announced to the court. She would not hesitate to hold him in contempt of court. This makes me feel good. I'll tell you this. This actually makes me feel good, Rubia. Thank you. Because <laughs> I got in trouble. Like, people don't like it. I said, yeah, he said very stupid things. And he, if this were done properly, he probably would have been found liable to some on some of the statements. The punishment as well should only be proportionate and reasonable. But what happened here is an injustice, a procedural injustice that nobody's gonna, nobody cares about now because it's Alex Jones. In the same way they didn't care when they, when they deplatformed Alex Jones. Oh, and then all of a sudden they start deplatforming people you do like and like procedural injustice. Well, too bad you already ratified that. $965 million. I mean, I don't want to compare it to wrongful death lawsuits, but I will. Alex Jones didn't kill anybody. Alex Jones had nothing to do with the tragedy. He made very careless, factually incorrect and hurtful statements on limited occasions afterwards. And you're going to, you're going to, this guy's going to get ordered to pay by orders of magnitude, more than medical malpractice, more than actual murder, more than actual wrongful death. I mean, it's, people have lost their minds. People have lost their minds. I want to, I want to feel this one. Cheryl Graham, thank you Viva for supporting Alex. I'm not supporting Alex per se. I'm supporting the principle here. I, ha I happen to think Alex has been vilified 
uh, disproportionately so. He certainly says things which are hyperbolic, et cetera. And the things about Sandy Hook were just dumb. Uh, but, you know, the gay frogs business, okay, some people can find that offensive. Uh, I, I said after I had Alex on the show, you know, he describes things in hyperbolic manners. When he says the, 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 the cell towers are going to, are, are, are mind control. Well, people laugh at that and say it's stupid. But the only difference between mind control and mind interference is uh, sort of like this superpower ability. But some types of control actually involve destruction. So if people can interfere, control someone's mind by interfering with it and destroying its ability to function properly, sound waves, pulsars, things like that are, are types of weapons. They don't control, but they certainly interfere with. And it's a known fact that cell towers, uh, frequencies from cell phones interfere with sleep patterns. And in that sense, Alex Jones calls it mind control to be hyperbolic, but it's certainly interference with certain bodily functions. And so in that sense, you know, fact check false, but substantively kind of th there's some truth to it. But I'm not defending Alex for what he, he said stupid things. We're defending a principle. We're defending a process. And if we're not, the process itself is gone. And the process is what ensures that it doesn't happen unjustly to someone you like. When it happens unjustly to someone you don't like, people tend to look the other way. Work hard, you'll sleep just fine. I can, I can assure you that that is not true. In fact, it seems that the harder I work, the worse I sleep because I wake up in the middle of the night thinking of things that I should not be thinking about. Rubio, we must allow speech. It is the basis of our society. If somebody lost their livelihood or had specific damages, then I think it makes a lot more sense, but this is crazy. I, I, and then the argument is going to be, well, people harassed the family and Alex Jones directed them to do that. I watched the trial. The evidence was actually contrary to that. First of all, Alex Jones never asked, endorsed, encouraged anybody to go harass them. The evidence actually was that they were being harassed and some of these lies that are attributed to Alex Jones were being made prior to and were popular even before Jones covered it. But we didn't have, it. We didn't have a hearing on the merits. We only had a hearing on the merits of the quantum because the judge said, I declare Alex in nuclear default of his obligations um, to comply with discovery. I declare him guilty by default verdict. No need for a jury, that pesky little jury of your peers, things that, you know, fundamental justice. I declare him guilty. Now let's go to a, a, a trial by jury on the quantum. Uh, but by the way, Alex Jones, here's the things you can't say. I apologize. I regret it. I didn't mean to hurt anybody. I didn't make any money off of it. Uh, and I corrected myself. Can't say those things. So get up on the stand. And if you, if you venture into those areas, I'm going to put you in jail. 